want to welcome everyone to the May 12th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. And we will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we don't as yet have anyone here under public comment, although public we did comment. hear at the meeting the SEDS meeting was this morning, which was the annual um, report for the SEDS project that um, uh, not Joanne Buntage, but one of her... Yeah, Ann Kennedy may be stopping by, by to, to talk about the, the village. Village revitalization. Right. Correct. So right. we can, I guess, hold off until On that, that time. On the SEDS, I would mention that Leslie Richardson, uh, we had our uh, department manager's staff meeting. We do that every other month. And Leslie gave an excellent presentation to the department managers on the whole SEDS program and the process and everything. So that was very helpful. Very right. helpful. So it's it's good. pretty amazing what they're going forward with. Yep. And they've taken some of those projects out and put something in. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, the fact that they're all remaining together and it's not gathering dust. Yeah. And Darlene had a good idea to kind of get the department managers involved, kind of going forward with ideas and things. So we're going to work on it process to do that, incorporate that. Well, with them. Paul, Paul brought, mentioned some, some really important things this morning, is that the federal government is now looking at regionalization, and they're looking at ways, instead of just, say, funding a project in this state or that state or a community in the north and another one in the south, that they're looking at communities that are, are have planning functions and opportunities and goals and projects. And so what they're looking to do is fund multiple projects in the same community, where that it makes sense. And when, when you look at the SETS project, the, there are many of those um, objectives, that, those goals that they have outlined, that, that um, go together. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there were like six or seven that are related. And so there are different agencies in the government that might fund each one. But for, for our purposes, and in terms of accomplishing those, you need to have funding for all of them to make yeah. it all work. Right. And of course, Open Cape helps to push that, right. push right. that forward. So that's a whole different thrust, I think, in terms of, of funding from the federal government. And the fact that we're this far ahead of the curve, I would think, and Paul believes too, from what he said this morning, that it puts us in a really good position to get some of this uh, federal money from yeah. various from various agencies. So that yeah, and, and it is, I mean, Open Cape is a great model as to how they did a mm -hmm. regional approach to their grant, and they really had many of the uh, stakeholders right. involved, from the Outer Cape all the way up mm -hmm. to the county level. Mm -hmm. The collaboration. Federal, the and collaboration, that and that's what it key showed, key. was that, that there is... Um, uh, many partners will benefit from this grant, and that's the way we have to sort of yeah, start thinking sure. about how we're yeah. framing things mm -hmm. now. So, and he talked about a uh, what did he call it? A regional uh, data information center that when Cape when Open Cape is 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 completed, mm -hmm. that there will be able to be this data information center because they'll have a place to. But a center of excellence for on like on water. water. Yeah, on, um, yeah some so if we could bring, you know, actually we had kind of discussed that a little bit when we were going through the Zenstar and it kind of touched on it in my article that's coming up, with, but I didn't say it as eloquently, I'm sure. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if you could, there are so many groups looking at waste uh, water, uh, w drinking water, mm -hmm. waste water, there's all of these tests going on, there's Silent Spring and there's Green Cape and there's those, uh, those agencies out there looking at the drinking water qualities. Then you have APCC and various other, Woods Hole is even looking at things. If we could have a centralized bank of intellectual property, so to speak, or um, that people could go to and actually bring those people together and really we could focus on, you know, focus our efforts instead of everybody out there like these little satellites. The other thing that came up in the wastewater collaborative following that um, was said this morning, <clears throat> was that Silent Spring did issue a um, press release today. Did you get that? I think I did, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. the press release, and now I didn't read it, but it was read out loud, so I'm going to paraphrase some of the elements in there, but um, that they have conducted a, a comprehensive study of, uh, I want to say, 
I can't remember how many wells, but it was a substantial amount. And 75% of them showed traces of um, hormone inhibitors, you know, chemicals, you mm. know, the drug, you know, medications. Mm. Um, endocrine disruptors. <clears throat> and yes, that's it. Endocrine disruptors. And um, uh, various other things that, you know, lead to concern. Now, what was the level of those in the water? Because, of course, these are in everybody's water, and the EPA has um, certain levels that they deem acceptable. But they felt that they weren't. Now, you throw that out into the public, sort of like throwing out n spraying on the right of, rights of way, and um, uh, so what are you going to do about it? I mean, what is the repercussion? Mm -hmm. There's no solution. So in some ways, it's just going to probably create anxiety. But um, again, so there's some information. Maybe if we had a group of people brought together that could address that and really look at it, and we could look at it factually as to what the... the um, consequences, the risks of that is, and, and where they're not. So I'm sure that there's going to be lots of talk about this tomorrow, and there's going to be a lot of, um, uh, there'll be an outcry of tomorrow. tomorrow in the press, because this oh, was a press, press release, so I'm mm -hmm. sure that there'll be people weighing in in different groups. But it also points out that of all of the contributors to what we may be fearing in our wastewater, NSTAR is one component that was actually trying to do very targeted, very limited right. Um, uh, spraying. spraying, and they're even uh, working with us more so, so we can map and that sort of thing. So um, it's easy to turn to the big, the big corporate guy, but there's lots going on just here at home, which was uh, part of my. And I think mm. a lot of the medications. I'm not sure EPA has a standard. There is no yet. standard. Oh, and, you know, so there was also the like aerosols in yeah. there, and there is no standard. Well, right. So well, personal products too. Yeah, I mean, I mean with shampoos and all yeah. of that. All of those were the types of things, things right. that just wash off and go down the drain. Yeah, and the more septic systems you have, then you know, that's right. where the, mm -hmm. that concentration comes right. from. So. The other thing I found interesting from last week with uh, Mike McGuire here, um, when you know he was addressing um, uh, Andre. Um, uh, Dick Andre. Yeah, Dick Andre's uh, concern about, um, you know, who's paying for what as far as this hazardous waste pickup. Um, you know, that alone, when people do not have a place to bring their paints and their turpentine and their, you know, those types of products as yeah. well as their medications, they either go down the toilet, medications will, or they'll go out in the woods. I mean, there's That's plenty of times true. I've walked out in Wellfleet or out in the various woods and you'll find some sort of debris. Not a lot, not everybody does that, but yeah. those all seep in. That's right. And those are also a contributor and that's where we are guilty as much as anyone else. So. We did get a letter from Mr. Andre. He did send it to myself. He copied Tom Lynch and I shared it with Pat. And you can take a look at it. And I do have a response. You can, I have a copy. I did speak to him. We, you know, He grabbed Pat and I that same day. And it's too bad he missed... He said God. it wasn't and, and on the it, agenda. Oh well, but I thought it was clear, and I do say mm -hmm. that in there that when we left that day with him there, we did, we, said, we were saying we will get Mike to come under public comment and address any comments. Right. We so right. So, well, I think so I've was, encouraged him to mm -hmm. call Mike with any questions he had because it's clear in his letter he still does not understand it. Well, when I told him that there was no money that comes directly to the county, which right. was the biggest, <clears throat> that, that we just yeah. try to negotiate a good deal for the towns, and then the towns pay directly Great to the disposal. Yeah. Um, that sort of kind of he's no, that's not right. Nice enough. It's and it's true. I, I would <laughs> add to that, and we coordinate the event. Like if it's a multi-town event, mm -hmm. we provide staffing. We provide. Mike is there. He does the coordination. But you're right. Mm -hmm. The money that the town pays goes to the vendors who take whatever material is collected, hazardous material, and do the disposal. Right. We don't see any of that money. Right. Well, and, and usually it's it's a, it's not just available to the people who live in the comm district. It's for the whole town. It's for the whole town. That's to exactly what it is. So the town of Barnstable did not right. have the wherewithal mm -hmm. to fund that piece for 2011. You know, I think Mike m m offhandedly, I don't even think he was soliciting um, money. Mm -hmm. Com found out through Mike or not through Mike. Com said, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. We'll... I, I get you ten thousand dollars for that yeah. payment to the vendors from the town of Barnstable for their yeah, for the whole town communities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would think that any resident of the town of Barnstable would be grateful that calm, whether they lived in the calm district or not. If they didn't, they would be more grateful. 
But you know, when it comes, to, to, when it comes to the meds, uh, people really need, or prescriptions, people really need to, I'm used to saying meds, okay. need to understand where their trash goes. And for us, at least for most of us on the Cape, that our trash goes to CMAS and they incinerate it. Right. So you can put your unused prescription Men's, drugs yeah, right. right in your trash. You're supposed to be well, you're, you're supposed to yeah, they said it. to put they said to um he said put it in a plastic bag with um alcohol, alcohol or yeah. alcohol, something alcohol. like that yeah. and zip it tight yeah. mm -hmm. and that will dissolve it or what have you but Yes, once it gets there, it just it. Up. I think that denatured alcohol prevents somebody from finding and using it. Yes, basically. exactly. That way, you know, you're not helping somebody's right. habits or right. get but at one. least it, it is incinerated, yeah, so there's exactly. no chance yeah. once it gets to see that stuff. Just uh, breathe it out. <laughs> so, right. so, yeah, so I've encouraged Mr. Andre to talk to Mike like, straight now, and if they yeah. disagree, they disagree, but... I think I think we need at least know factually what's going on. With yeah, it. and it would be good maybe to even have him here one more time just so we have it clear. But he he is stuck on that one point. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not here. He was at a retirement board meeting yesterday for yeah, for not, for not very long. For not very long. Yeah. Why don't we uh, talk about the West, the village of restoration yes. the renovation plan? Because Joanne mentioned that they were hoping that someone from the commission could help them right. if they're planning. When, when I went to, there was going to be a meeting uh, a month or six weeks ago over at St. Mary's, and it was pouring, pouring rain, uh, and it was amazing, about over 100 people, I would say, showed up, and the door was locked. They didn't have the key to get in, so they had to cancel the meeting. And I commend everybody in, in the village area, the Bonestell Village, to, for showing up on such a horrible night. However, she and I spoke uh, under an awning afterwards for a little bit, and I said, what is it that you really would need from us? And she says, well, really, we just need you to sort of, um, you need to sort of direct the commission to be part of this, like to show up and to be part of it, because it is going to be revitalization, um, and it will probably end, end up needing some sort of um, DRI review in the end anyway. So if they could be part of it from the beginning and see where the discussion is going, they could even have dis suggestions for the committee as to this, this is what you should be thinking of, that isn't what you'd be thinking of. So I had mentioned that to Paul, but I think he was really looking for something official like today, like, yes, you know, go yeah. to so these meetings. So he would like us to, um, to, give to actually to send, to give a directive and send sure. a letter to him right. um, sure. saying yeah. that we, we support the, the idea right. of his assigning I would yes. suggest you do this, you vote to authorize we vote the to Cape Cod Commission to utilize yeah you know, its staff and resources to, to support the, to blah, assist blah, blah, blah. with the project. All right, so I, I will uh, propose and, and put forth that we um, we involve the That's commission. That's my motion. Maybe as, uh, as, 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 as stated as by Mark, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Zelensky. I will formulate some and I will appropriate language. And I will second the motion. All those uh, uh, in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Yes, and I know that Bill Two in favor, a motion carries. Yes. Oh. Do you want to explain why Mr. Uh, Mr. Oh, Doherty Oh, yes. Is? Uh, I must say that uh, Bill Doherty is not here today because he is representing Barnstable County at the National County Organization meeting in Atlanta. And he will be there for most of the week. I think yeah, Monday I think it's through a few Thursday, days, yeah. something it's like National that. National Association of County Officials. Right. And it's actually very good. One of the things Bill brought back last time is he had, I, I, I don't know if specifically he had volunteered, but Barnesville County is going to participate. I don't want to pre-announce this, so I will be a little bit conscious. But we're going to participate in a pilot program they're going to have similar to our drug uh, discount card, mm -hmm. and it's for dental service. Mm -hmm. So they're oh. working on putting together the details for that. That will be announced. Uh, pretty soon, but you'll be able to get a basically a Barnstable County uh, dental service discount card through NACO. You'll be able to take it to participating NACO dentists. NACO meaning we're National Association, National Association. Of they, they put it together, and you'll be able to get a discount on dental services, which I think is a tremendously important because there's so many people out there who just don't have any, you know, access to dental care except at you know retail prices basically exactly so. and they're exorbitant too, yeah so. and they can be yeah so yeah. so that's hopefully that'll be a terrific program they're working on the details putting that together right now but I uh, expect we'll be announcing that in the next couple of months okay. Excellent.
The other thing we want to talk about is Friday's meeting with the yes. regionalization, state regionalization committee. They are preparing, they have prepared a report and they're taking that report around the state. And that is a draft report, is it not? I mean, they're I still believe looking it is a draft, yeah. And yeah, they're still looking for public comment. So, um, so Mark provided me with some. And I have a copy. With a PowerPoint. Good copy. PowerPoint. I did see the yeah, the PowerPoint. Yeah. There's a printed version if you want. Thank you. So, um, I, and it's pretty, it's pretty much an overview of Barnstable County. Yeah, and the services that and we do. all the services. And you know, when you really read through all this and, and realize what the county provides to the towns, it's amazing. And when I read that report, and they they sort of single out the Franklin County Franklin Council of Government. I know. Well, as, for the purchasing thing that they do, that's basically. Yeah, and thing. the accounting that they apparently have well a cost accounting or cost allocation, I guess is what it is. They have figured out a great model for being able to allocate costs to each of the towns that receive mm -hmm. similar services that right. Franklin County, Franklin Council of Governments provides. But it's not a county, it's like a, it's like a service it's agency. It's an association. It's an yeah, yeah, it's that like provides it's exactly a, a yeah. service it to people who, who want to <laughs> contract with them, yeah, right. which is totally different from what we're doing because we have a revenue source. Their only revenue source, I would assume, is what they collect it's from the services. It's basically whatever the provide. towns, and I would use the word volunteer to pay, mm -hmm. because right. I'm sure that there certainly is no legislative mandate to pay. There may be some kind of contractual <coughs> agreement. But I can imagine a town entering use. into a contractual agreement that can't legally, that says two years from mm -hmm. now I'll pay you X. They can always say, we didn't appropriate, I don't have it. So right. it's voluntarily. Base, basically, right. so that's going to be limited, um, and and that can be useful in certain instances. And this is what I would argue. So you can do certain things under that model, and I, this is a philosophy, I think, issue. And I think the state house for many years has had a philosophy of how to do regionalism, and that philosophy is to use intermunicipal agreements mm -hmm. to do a bunch of stuff. And if you want to collectively kind of associate, like Franklin did, and they put that model in the law that eliminated a lot of counties back in 97, that was the model that they used, that Council of Governments model. The philosophy was if you want to join, you know, volunteer, fine, that's one way to do it. But intermunicipal agreements and kind of that's, the, that's really the model. It's a voluntary model. And that has... A, that has its uses. You can do mutual aid, as we see in public mm -hmm. safety. A lot of places do mutual aid. You have intermunicipal agreements to do a certain thing. But the trouble with that model, I'd say, is it's limited. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that we do, the wastewater collaborative, the dredge, the Cape Light Compact, and then this Cape and Vineyard Electric Cooperative, that model doesn't work because there isn't an administrative entity that can kind of provide administrative support, even some seed money into doing bigger and bigger things. Um, Cape on Compact, if we didn't provide the administration for it, it wouldn't mm -hmm. exist. It's, it just couldn't. There's just no way that it could. Ma, um, can you explain a little bit? We, our, a, lot of, a lot of our revenue comes from the Registry of Deeds. From our? Uh, the percentage would be what? Of our About total seven out of twenty-five, so <coughs> a little bit less than a third. A little bit less than a third. Yeah. And how did that come about? And because that really our founding helps fathers mm -hmm. were back in 1988. <laughs> whoever they were, way long ago. 88. I'm sure. Yes, I'm ago. sure Senator O'Leary played a role in that. There's another name there. who I know drafted the charter. Oh. He was from Barn. I think he was from Barnes. Yes, it's. Um, and I can't think of his name, and I apologize. I think he's. Passed. He mean, has passed. passed Just up uh, Jones, Bob Jones. No, uh, I was thinking David something. But hey, okay. <laughs> the history is—it's a little bit before my time. But they had the the, the founding fathers of Barnesville okay. County Regional Government, mm -hmm. exactly, had the foresight to include in our Home Rule Charter a, a, a phrase basically that says we have the ability to um, impose a registry of deeds excise tax at the same level that the state charges. And for years, the state charged $2.28 per thousand. That's what we charged. And then just the year bef 
this year, this fiscal year, we, we, we upped it a little bit up to yeah. 270. Mm -hmm. The state level is at 342. So, so we still so have we still, we still have some go room, that way. room, right? So this so. so so in our home rule charter, mm -hmm. we have decided to impose this tax upon ourselves, the registry deeds excise tax, and that's what funds a lot of the core things that we do here. Yes. Right. And that was passed uh, by uh, referendum on yep. the ballot. So the voters did vote on that. And reaffirmed in 2000. Mm -hmm. There might have been another vote in there that I'm missing. But. Yeah, I, I, I do recall that. But I'm thinking that at, other, at the reason that other counties say, like for instance, uh, Plymouth County, they didn't have any revenue stream. To they don't have that, no. So what happens is when the when the sheriffs left, there was there was no county. Mm, there's a little bit more to it than that, and that is, you know, there's the county tax, mm -hmm. which is different, and that is a tax uh, imposed upon the towns yeah, themselves right. yes. on their cherry sheets, so mm -hmm. to speak. It's not it's not a budget item that needs to be paid by the town, but it's calculated into their tax rate calculation. Mm -hmm. um, many of the other c counties had either zero or none uh, county tax amounts. And that was because back in, I believe it was 93, and that, that predates me a little bit too, there was a whole recalculation of what the county tax assessment was, and it was based on what the county was doing, what kind of services they were offering, how much they were going to give to the sheriff for their contribution. And that's really when the state pulled the budgeting authority out from under the county commissioners in, in all the areas of the state. Um, put it really under the state's auspices, so to speak, the budget setting authority for sheriffs, and then imposed a charge to the counties to pay for the sheriff service, the maintenance of effort. And ours was fairly substantial at that time. I don't remember what the initial calculation was, but you know it went up two and a half percent every year. So that as of the last year it was imposed, it was about two and a quarter million dollars, and it was fairly close to what the the county tax was, which was for us about two and a half million. So so there's a little bit more to it than that. And there most of the other counties when they calculated both the county tax assessment and the maintenance and effort were much smaller. In fact I'm not even sure Plymouth had a county tax assessment. I don't think they did. I don't think they do either. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm sure they didn't. And then there's one additional piece that you have to mention kind of in a major revenue source. And that's the Cape Cod Commission mm -hmm. Act, because mm -hmm. the Cape Cod Commission, in its act that was ratified by the voters in 89, has the Cape Cod Environmental Protection Fund tax that mm -hmm. is imposed, again, on the town, same as the county tax assessment. Um, it's imposed based on equalized valuation. In simplest forms, there's a complex formula in Master and Law, but in simplest forms, you add up all the value of the property that's redone every two years, in every town of the Cape, all 15 towns, each town's equalized valuation relative to the total, that's about how much they pay in terms of their proportional right. assessment, both on the Cape Cod Commission tax and on the county tax. And I was in, a, in an executive meeting at the commission one morning, and they were talking about that revenue, and it really comes out to be about $10.50 per household. Per year? So, yeah, per year. Per year. So it really is, for when you think of the services, particularly now that they've really sort of restructured the commission where they're where they're out there to the towns, look, we're going to be doing all that mapping for the GPS. All of that mm -hmm. is going to be free of charge. They just did all of East Ham's for free. Um, you know, more and more of the towns are going to the commission for help with their zoning issues, for technical assistance. Now, uh, some of those... Uh, the development have a uh, application fee to go through their DRIs, but even that, a lot of times, I'm in there and they get negotiated down, and uh, they're already a bargain, and then they get um, some sort of relief to yeah, it because right. they're trying to get their project up and going. Yeah. So um, when you think of the work that comes out of there and the protections that we have because of it, and they actually have regulatory powers to... Um, you know, to come in and maybe say to negotiate a thing like NSTAR and have those types of discussions. Um, 
you know, it's a real asset to mm -hmm. us, and, yeah. and that's a cheap for all the knocking and kicking yeah. it gets. Yeah, the towns time. couldn't do that. No, on there's their own no absolutely there's just way, no they way they could. Yeah. They did, and, and even if they wanted to try, who's going to coordinate? You need right. somebody to step up to coordinate. That. Right. The, you know, the commission is the perfect example for that type of thing. Right. You know, traffic. this administrative structure for the Cape Light Compact or for the the Cape and Vineyard Electric exactly. Cooperative. All of those. You need that structure. <laughs> that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. Is you need some kind of administrative structure like that to be able to, <coughs> who has the time to do all that. Time, time and, and this is where I think, you know, our county government, and, and we can say this on Friday, I think yeah, is that, the... That was my question. Mm -hmm. You are going to be there. Yeah, I will be there with you. And do you know if Paul's going to be there? I don't I have know. To call, I'll, we'll call oh, I, th I, I know that Patty sent something to me because she was thinking, you know, they had sent those, or maybe you did to them to think about these things, so I'm not sure who's going to go if it's going to be Patty or Paul. But, um, um, you know, I have always, you know, when I was coming into county government, I was learning about it. It to me, you could just see where it was that layer of government. Oh, who needs another layer of government? But it was that perfect layer that sat between what the towns can't do and what the state won't do. Right, I, and, you're exactly. And right. that is, in and, it, and it's um, when you think of how economical it is and the benefits that it gives, and so many people are unaware of it. And now we're going to be doing this wastewater, and today. Um, they were proposing how to go about um, putting this together, this program forward. The the regulatory process. It looks they're they're hoping that instead of each town having to go through uh, DEP and um, go through all of this filing to see if their regulatory, you know, what the regulations are and spending all of this money, we are proposing that the county do that, do the regulatory process so that we can already. Um, give a a roadmap to towns to say this is what you're going to have to do, this is the timing that you're going to have to do it, so that we will take up the onus and do that, right. and uh, and f collectively for a group of towns or all towns, and um, you know that's a huge a huge expense and a huge yeah. savings to the towns, yeah. and that that we're putting out to do. That. Right. Of course, remember too, back in the eighties, development was rampant. And, right. and, and and a lot of the thrust of the Cape Cod Commission was to bring some control That's to that exactly development. Right, yeah. But they had no control over residential development. No. No, but nevertheless. There was the strip malls that were right. scared everybody, I think. Yeah, and, and the, the box, Cape had changed a lot. The, the, the box 80s. stores and yeah, all of that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that really. I think fostered the promotion of the Cape Cod Commission. And, right. and that's where the, the, the flaw in their, their, um, their regulation was anything over 10,000 square feet. So it was a one-size-fits-all where now these, um, not Chapter H, but is it called Chapter H? No, uh, you know, there are points that they have just, they have all of these different uh, amendments that they just changed within yeah, it right, as a right. recommendation. Or, or Section H. Yeah, Section, right, Section right, right, H yeah. and Section D, and all of these help the towns fit those regulations right. to the size right. of their town, and they can go forward. And, um, you know, that's... 20 years later that finally got into place. Right, you've gotten yeah. away from the 10,000 being the bad guy. Everybody right, because now you have To be now, you promote models. cluster development, so you, you put the growth where you want it. That's the whole notion. Right. Yeah. And so where it, it should be. Yeah, and where it should be. Where you can... Well, where I, you can I just say that because, um, because when we do speak tomorrow, I think we need to emphasize the fact that we are a sustainable county. Mm -hmm. and that we don't want to be concluded in this rush to uh, absolve or, or uh, abolish rather, yeah. all of the counties. Yeah, because, you know, as, as well-intentioned as the lieutenant governor is on this, he doesn't get it. No. If you remember when we yep. met with him before mm -hmm. that, um, Franklin County, uh, he didn't really get what we were no. talking about. And he doesn't understand really. I mean, his experience is Worcester County, so I think he sees these towns and right. really willing. There's like so, sort of the parochialism we have here. but. Um, his frustration, I think, was coming out of that there was not an umbrella government. That he doesn't see the the benefit of that umbrella right. government to help these towns come right. together on a. Um, you know, and maybe Worcester doesn't government. work. I, I, you know, to have a, a regional entity, maybe that doesn't work oh, in Worcester. That's fine. Don't do it. Cities. So. Yes. Yeah, so I, I it's it's it was it's for a time very sustainable. Yeah. Right. Well, I think so. You know, sometimes though, cities can benefit the most because you know cities are getting to a point where they're get they're paring down to this core. You know, police, fire, uh, 
public works and schools and everything else don't bother me with you know you kind of hear that all the time mm -hmm. and it's that everything else though that health agent services human services a lot of these other things that are much more affordable on a regional basis mm -hmm. so. right. actually Kathy Schatzberg was telling me this morning that she attended a conference down in um, I think it was South Carolina that the Ford Foundation is she's sort of uh, bellying up and um, and talking about sustainable communities and how they how they may be interested in funding certain communities that want to find ways to remain sustainable, particularly in the South. When well, remember when all the manufacturing was down there, right. you know, all that. Then the manufacturing went away, right. and now what are they going to do? Right. They there's nothing there, but they have land. And so now they're they're back to talking of agricultural oh. efforts to um, to grow food, whatever, and and keep the the money within the within that community. Kind of interesting. It almost feels like we're going backwards to yeah. when oh, everyone grew their own. I mean, uh, well, yeah, yeah, that re yeah, it, it is. It's all about it's it's the community all, yeah. being able to be mm -hmm. self-sustaining. She was speaking about that today, and I think well, we are having to go backwards, and, and uh -huh. actually, we're going back to where we should be. And go to our natural rhythms and our natural resources. And it, the way she described it to me is that instead of making the land adapt to us, mm -hmm. we are we're we're learning to readapt to the the balance of the land. Well, when you think of the cost too, I mean, even though these uh, products from the farms are organic, nevertheless, if you're buying it from somewhere else, it has to be trucked. Or oh, put yeah. on rail, yeah, and if you keep it within the town, you, well, you, you eliminate to eat all of that. Yeah. 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 You have to eat. Yeah, I know. Well, that's I, well, that's good. With me. I like turkeys and cranberries anyway. in the winter time. Um, so, okay, since we're not sure if Ann, th that was a thought that she might come by here today, Ann Kennedy. She it wasn't a right, no, it wasn't. Was. It wasn't definitely. And there is but nothing they just wanted else us to on our. So I would like to. Oh, is there something else you No, want? I was going to say, you, you know, if you're going to deliver this, you can either do two things. We can go through it now, or you can just mark it up, get back to me, and I can polish it up for tomorrow, right, and then well, you'll have it. So that's, for, you know, Friday. that was the only, that was the only why thing. Don't, why don't you just take a look at it yes. and see um, uh, the, the notes that go with it while they're, right, they're the not notes on it. go right? with it originally it's, were... Uh, comments I had done for Mary. This is one that we did a few years ago. I can't remember what we were doing it for. It might have been for the county bill when we were doing it. Some testimony. Yeah, I probably but modified you, it a little bit. Yeah, the, it, uh, you know, feel but free. I, I no think in reading it through, I wouldn't change any of the um, uh, of the powerpoints. I don't think. No. I think they're all basic. They belong there. This is what we do. Um, is the is the collaborative in there? I believe it is, yeah, because it's one of the key pieces. In the, right um, where's the no, you know something, Mark, you don't have that in there. Page one, where, where are you? This is page four. It says Regional Services of Brownsville County, the Cape Lake Compact, Department of Human Services, Sorry, Children's Cape Code. Commission, Health, Cape Fire Compact, Training, it should have the Wastewater Collaborative. It could, should have the Cape Cod Commission, you know? It's in the commissions in there, it's past it. Yeah. Oh, I see. It goes on to the next. Yeah, oh, it oh, keeps I on see. going. Yeah, I see. It's several <coughs> because it's only so much you can put on the slide. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. Oh, okay. So there's many. All right. Now you've got have them. you come to the I've got it. Yeah, yet? she has the collect. It would yeah. provide wastewater. So it's uh, regional services of the health department, the light contact, fire training. How are we doing with the fire training? I know that they were pursuing some sort of legislative. I don't think there's been any movement on the legislation mm -hmm. yet, but they are, you know, it's still in the in the in process. I guess that's how you would describe it. The the real issue that's going on up there now. I just gave my presentation to the um, collector treasurer today on the municipal relief package, and of course. Yesterday, I think the new Senate version came out, which is different. So every time I give that presentation, I have to change it. So we're, we're working on it. There's some, and actually, that's a good example of, you know, the towns individually can't do any of that. Maggie and I have been kind of monitoring pieces of the municipal relief package, trying to get some changes that I think are appropriate uh, done. And, and that's something the towns can't do, and we're doing that. And the towns appreciate it. They very much appreciate kind of being kept up to date on what's going on up at the state house that impacts them. So, um, 
Tell me a little bit more about the Medical Reserve Program. Medical is Reserve the, Corps is, is the um, group that, um, it's basically coordinating volunteer doctors who are available to respond in the event of an emergency, mm -hmm. whatever do emergency. They, don't they also do immunizations? And, and that was one. That, mm -hmm. that the latest uh, uh, swine flu epidemic was one of the emergencies that the Medical Reserve Corps um, was able to respond to and to provide immunization services to the towns at a much, much more efficient basis and basically at very little cost. Now the RTA is organized under a different umbrella. The Regional Transit Authority is under a different statute. Yeah, yeah it's that, but it's also, it does, it's not a county agency. It's its own agency, yeah, it's a separate entity. Entirely. But the county is, is uh, sort of a partner uh, as, a, as a, a member of the board. Does You're talking about retirement? No, right. I'm just talking about the regional transportation, just the agency itself. Um, we don't have uh, uh, well, Bill's on the board, but Bill's is on the board. Not because he's a commissioner. Um, I think it is. It, it's, yeah. We have a seat at the table. A seat at the table. Yeah. I guess that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, he's certainly not the Howard's representative. So that's, I think that's no. his reason at the table. But that's our only involvement is like a seat on the board. Mm -hmm. So if you had three things that you not you, we. If we want to say, what are the three most important things that we want this regionalization committee to know about Barnesville County? I think we should try to, you know, to emphasize three or four things that, about what we do that, that are paramount for them to consider. Well, I think that what would they by stating that we are that layer of government in between what the towns can't do, especially in this economic time and what the state won't or can't do. Or yeah. do. Yeah. It's they won't. I'm funded, man. They won't we're do. crucial to filling in those governmental, it's not the right word, but we're crucial to filling in service gaps. Service gaps. We the state and the, the local communities, because they're so pressed for resources, they're leaving gaps in right. services. And Between the town and the state. And right? they, they're crucial services here. Mm -hmm. they're in some of them, like the dredge, the dredge means direct money to the towns. Right. State's not funding dredging, you know, in the traditional sense mm -hmm. where they would pay 75% of the cost, the town kicks up 25, they're not, they're not really funding that. Mm -hmm. um, so if towns, especially shoreline communities, couldn't do dredging, it's going to impact their pocketbook because they can't charge for the slip fees and all the other services that provide boaters. So, you know, we had the foresight to say, you know, let's step in and we'll put together a dredging program. <coughs> so the dredge is a good example. It's a, a, <coughs> the dredge is a good example. I mean, and when you look at it, I mean, the dredge is a good example. Um, the uh, health department mm -hmm. coming in and filling in services for free, pretty much. Yeah. Do we all of the testing, the water, the water testing mm -hmm. through the summer, or yeah. how the beaches get monitored, that is all free. Oh. Yeah. I was going to say wastewater. Wastewater and, is another. And what we have done in the wastewater, wastewater the millions easy. of dollars we've been leveraging. Right. Uh, watersheds don't care whether it's a town border or not. Right. They cross them <laughs> anytime they want. Right. right. Because, um. the sh because we have shared watersheds yeah. all around the Cape. Right. There's only one town that doesn't. Who is, which town is that? That doesn't have a water, a that, shared watershed? Yeah. There's one that does stand alone. What a town is doesn't really is, is there one town that doesn't have a coastline? No, no, everybody's got a coastline. Everybody? Brewster doesn't have a harbor per se, but um, well, but P Town is on the Monomoy lands, so if, if that's what you mean. I, I, guess well, I always hear them say that there's one town that that yeah. doesn't actually have a watershed for as such. Uh, well. Yeah. Oh, we don't have to. We'll have to that. look into that. Yeah. But <clears throat> so the wastewater collaborative is really a huge. Um, oh, the wastewater collaborative, and even the commission, I think, is a huge. Has yeah. turned out to be That's a right. crucial. And and you know, after coming to that sense today, when you think of how the um, you know, and he did point out we're a region basically east. As a lot of people, a good line from Paul today was, uh, a lot of people felt that uh, the commission thwarted economic development. I I say it's the canal. Yeah. Because yeah. once the canal was there it is difficult for, for businesses to be here and that sort of thing. So sure. we are a region unto ourselves, an island unto ourselves mm -hmm. pretty much. And what the innovation that we can do um, 
and create uh, and, and and with the ideas of that are coming out of this SEDS program as far as vital communities, mm -hmm. the revitalizing the communities and bringing population density in. After going to that APA mm -hmm. conference, that is really the wave of what's going on in, in Europe and of the future. It's not just windmills, it's not just solar, those are elements of energy conservation. But the days of the baby boomer and having the, the house within the two acres in the middle of the two acres and we mow it and we feed it and we, you know, we, uh, you know it's ours, uh, people don't want that anymore. As the baby boomers age, they want to have some sort of robust living community, that's why these uh, life communities come up, mm -hmm. where they can have all of their services within walking distance and still have open space around them. And the new families coming up like the idea of cities per se, but cities are robust communities where the density is living, they can walk, they can have their children out somewhere within eye shot, and they don't have to be right on top They're of them. They're moving back into the city. That's exactly right. And you still have your open space, you know, in your wilderness and the outside. Yeah. So, But you also build, try to build within that, that area of the city, right. the park, the park and, the, right. and the open space. Right, so it's all of that. And, bringing, and when you have that density, you can do more with less, like the pipes, if you're having sewering systems and all of that, that's shorter pipes, so everything is cared mm -hmm. for easier. And the other thing in Europe, they had, um, there's all these different innovations. It's just amazing. It, it gave me hope for the future, actually, that, um, uh, you know, as I say, wind was a small component. Solar was big on a lot of things, you know, on rooftops <laughs> and all of that. But gardens on top of city buildings, where that's where the sustainable, you know, how can you be a self-sustaining um, uh, how can you feed yourselves in the city? All of the buildings are now being um, built with the idea of um, an agricultural entity on top of the building. There's things called vertical gardens where the buildings actually look like big mounds of beautiful flowers or because the, 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 um, the landscaping goes up the building. It keeps it cooler. It insulates mm -hmm. it in the winter. You can grow food off the side of your building. There was one in Southie that's somewhat like that. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I knew they other... Do it a, a, like a, it was a PBS had a special on right. building that It was building. down by the uh, waterfront, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can't tell you where, but yeah, it has, uh, it has a roof, top, it has a green roof, right. a sloped green roof. It has all, right. um, I guess what you would call green construction material. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. remember all about those. Remember, um, I can't think of his name from Intercontinental. Um, Tuesday, yesterday, oh, giving I, us the report Manager. Yeah. on um, on some of their properties. Yeah. And they were talking about this one um, uh, condo tower that they had built, right. and some of the seal the ceilings on the upper floors were leaking. And they found that they had put this garden on the right. roof. Only they they pounded, they drilled, the, <laughs> they uh, drilled uh, right through the, the, the concrete and all yeah. the water that was coming yeah. in. Was well, I think if you planned it as you were building the building, yeah, you that's probably right. you wouldn't get, get rid of it. Yeah, you could get get around that. That's, uh, well, you might you might address some of that. Yeah, too. they would really. Yeah. So, and the other thing that they were saying is mirroring. So if you don't have trees, say in Abu Dhabi when they're you know they're building this incredible place over there. Um, uh, in Dubai, uh, so there's not trees. They're, you know, they're pretty much in the desert. So what they have are these apparatus. So you have a a pole here, and it opens up like like this, and it will have these slats that will come down. So it gives shading, and yet it's open, and the breezes come through. And at night, it folds up like an umbrella. Uh -huh. And wow. it, you can have the open stars. You can have more open space, places for you to walk and. You know, maybe have uh, whatever it is, you have some sort of outdoor function in the evening. Absolutely amazing things. And they look beautiful when they're open and closed. So it's it's a lot of innovation out there, uh, a lot of hope for our, as I say, a lot of hope for our species, whether we deserve it or not. And um, <laughs> but see, that's the kind of thing the commission can bring to the table, whereas towns right. on an individual basis, right. most of them have one town planner, right. they don't have time to... Kind to be of thinking yeah. of all, and nor the money to, to even, that stuff, that's right, right, or even the money to help so, yeah. leverage their own So funds. we have service, the service gaps that we provide, mm -hmm. the wastewater collaborative to address, in other words, our ability to, to take issues and, and build a collaboration yeah. for the towns to address issues and wastewater is one right. of those. 
and then and the Cape Cod Commission. And, and, uh, yeah, I would call that like local. It, to me, there's the three things: just kind of that service niche, which we call our service our niche government here. There's everywhere in the state, people are dealing with wastewater planning, mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. most places, and a regional entity is the perfect entity to kind of do that because uh, watersheds don't care about right. local borders right. and land use planning right. more and more you know these bigger developments the big box stores they don't just impact the town right. that maybe they're in they impact their neighbors right. as well mm -hmm. so a regional entity is the perfect and a regional planning entity is the perfect entity to kind of deal with those right. those kind of issues and, and what the towns really have to i mean you know what happened back in the 80s and some of the 90s with these big box or these strip malls coming in you know it looks like a great economic engine oh here's something that's going to drive up the economy and this is a good thing and those businesses realize you know it doesn't work and you know there's only so many months that you're going to have those businesses or they have to get their people down and it's traffic in the summer or the dollars don't stay in the community. And they yeah. don't they go don't back stay. to the to the headquarters. That's right. And also, so after a while, they all pull out, and you have these empty strip malls, which we are, we do have around the Cape right now, mm -hmm. yeah. and that becomes a tax burden on the community mm -hmm. because you're still somehow mm -hmm. responsible for that property, maintaining that property mm -hmm. so that it may be taken over, and those are things that maybe we could reacquire and, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember several years ago, the Cape Cod Commission, uh, when they were thinking about the box stores and those type of retailers that were coming here, that they're, and they were in, in malls, that if they were going to be approved, they had to have a plan for what would happen to the property if they right. left. Right. Exactly. In other right. words, there had to be that plan of how that, it wasn't just going to sit there right. vacant, they, there had to be a plan within the plan. Right. So if those, if we mention those three strengths and those three, mm -hmm. uh, those three areas yeah. that, that really yeah. make us. And, and, and yeah. One other point I want to make with the lieutenant governor is that when we had that conversation with him, he kind of poo-pooed regional planning. And the thing that makes ours unique is that we do have regulatory power. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain amount of SWAT and um, authority that can help people come to the table uh, just by saying, and I think that that's what we do. We're, yeah. we're a convening county government because even in the Human Services Department, we had the the um, regional network luncheon the other day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really was because the county was able to bring everyone together and they played the honest broker right. and it, it's, it was a success, more so of a success than all the other than all the others around um, right. the state. And, and when you think about the commission, even though they're they're a they're they created under a separate um, piece of legislation, but they are part of county government. But they are so much a partner that there are more things we can do because we because have the commission. Exactly if we didn't right, have yeah. the commission, mm -hmm. we would be so limited. Right. in terms of the resources available to Absolutely. us to make any of this happen right. 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 because of their, their their planning, their regulatory, and their technical support, and their ability to to um, um, to work with, to create data and, right. and information. Right. And that which, really, you know, you have to give credit to Paul and his team. Oh, yeah. I mean, he has a phenomenal team. I love being over there because they're very creative. Mm -hmm. They're very future-thinking. And uh, and yet future thinking with an eye to the environment right. and protecting it. Yeah. So it's it's really a crackerjack kind of group over there, and uh, we should be happy we have them. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't think you need to go through the whole no, presentation. It's going to take forever. No, I'm going to select quickly. that. You say this is you know we're submitting this as our testimony and and just to show you you know what we do as as a regional entity, and then just talk on the points that you have. Yeah, what time is this stuff? Ten. Ten o'clock. But seven o'clock. Yes, yeah, seven a.m. is a breakfast. Is a, a Cape and Islands Selectman Councilors meeting, yeah. and they're going to oh, take wow. up regionalization too. So and that's why that they're moving be? it to seven, that. so yeah. that so everyone can, go can leave this? and be to the at the ten o'clock one. And the other that's there's Friday. something else going on that morning. It's somebody else's Friday morning breakfast or something. Uh, the only other thing I saw, we have our uh, bi-weekly CVEC uh, Brewster Wind Project calling. That's all I have. Oh. I don't have anything else. But yeah, I have 10 o'clock regionalization report at the uh, Four Seas 
the Russo atrium. Right. Okay, the Russo. Atrium. So, um, okay, so we'll see. And then Saturday the, um, is the wastewater. Is the wastewater workshop. workshop. I hope you registered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Then, um, I asked Andy last night if I was registered, and sure he said no. Yeah, <laughs> so, I but I either, but we're going to be there, and we might even just take the microphone. <laughs> well, actually, I registered today. Oh, okay. Um, well, with Fukara. I saw him today, but I didn't. But I'll, all right, so I'll tell Kara. But um, you need a credit card because you can't pay from the county. It's only ten dollars. I know. I can. It's I think I can cough that up. Well, we could pay. We just couldn't get you. Can't pay in time for Saturday. Yeah. Right. Today. Um, right. Um. All right. We have the other thing. So we want to move our our um, action items. Yes. Or do we want to we, no, we want to move our action items. But actually, I had a couple questions. Sure. Of course, they're probably right in here, but I didn't get a chance. I'll to probably look have at to look at them. Um. Where, where, let's see. Um, how about the how did the gasoline diesel bid come out? Was that Higher than last year, better than last year. Um, well, more towns we did have an issue, but it, I think it was a very. I, I think we had uh, the same number of towns participating. Um, I'd have to ask him. I read. It's still Bob Lawton when he was leaving. I said, "Well, how are you happy?" And he said, "Oh yes." He said, "Yeah, I good. think in general they're happy with what they get. Um, mm -hmm. Some towns pick a fixed price and they just say, this is what we're going to pay,' and some pick the." Loading. OEP, oh. which means they pay a premium whenever they buy over what the market price is there. And, it's, you know, it's some or some like the convenience and surety of the fixed price. I know exactly what my budget's going to be. I know how many gallons I have. If the price goes up, I win. If the price goes down, I lose. And others like to are more willing to take that little bit more risk and say, if the price goes down, I win. If the price goes up, I lose. So, you know, I don't know whether it fits what's 50-50 in terms of the towns, but uh, but yeah, it's a very successful bid. And um, I'm trying to remember, Noonan, I believe, got Yeah, Noonan, Noonan it says right here. The uh, um, majority, several. I think, of the bid, yeah. Noonan, Peterson, yeah, Noonan, Oil, yeah. MJT, and Dennis Burke. Yeah, because they've got different pieces. Uh, one's mm -hmm. a gas, one's a diesel, one's whatever. Right, yeah, they have a biofuel. Yeah. And they then there are three, right. three projects here that are funded under the license plate yep. mm -hmm. funds, you know, that from the grant project. Right. So and that is, um, yeah, there was some uh, concern about that. The, hmm? um, so the three projects was, one of them was the... Um, Cooperative extension is one. I don't know what specific extension project. Lewis Bay Research and Woods Hole Film Festival. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. And those were all voted on at the EDC, the other mm -hmm. thing as well. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so I uh, make a motion to uh, approve the uh, action items of uh, 512 10. And I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Two in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. So uh, should we give a shout out to uh, Commissioner Doherty who might be watching streaming on the. He web? might, sure. No, he, he's, not. He's, he's not. He's not, he's not he, anymore. He gave up. Yeah. We I thought he was on here, and I, I had to reboot it, and he he never rejoined the new meeting. Oh, okay. okay. He sent me an email, though. Was that only a two-minute meeting? Yeah. Yes, that's right. So now we're... <laughs> so now um, that 4 o'clock is the Charter Review Committee today? Is, is, that, is that true? I, I don't know. I actually don't know, and I, I didn't know. see an email announcement. I so said that I didn't see an email no. announcement either. I thought they were going to have one, but maybe not. Well, since I know they have a full schedule next Wednesday. There's a bunch of stuff going on. Do you have anything else you want to I do. Talk? I wanted to make our announcement from the Retirement Board, yes. which we are mm -hmm. uh, sharing with the mm -hmm. Treasurer Collectors and tomorrow with the Town Administrators. Um, a question came up on the assessment and when you pay it, and I don't even know where the question came from, but basically, traditionally, and that's the right word, under the retirement assessments to each of the towns and units, they pay twice a year, on July 1st and on January 1st. And because you pay half six months later, there's, a, there's a, 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 an interest calculation built into the actuarial funding schedule because you're only getting half of the money in the first half of the year and half in the second half. And someone asked the question, what if we ch wanted to pay uh, all of it on July 1st? And I have to give credit to Deb Cohen of the retirement uh, uh, office. 
she said, well, let me run that by the actuary, and, and our actuary, Kathy Riley, has crunched the numbers. And so basically, we, to, to boil it down, we are going to give the towns an option, and all the units an option, if they want to pay the retirement assessment in the traditional manner in two payments, July and January, they can do that. If they want to pay it all on July 1st, they're going to get about a, a discount is not the right word. Randy today at the meeting said you can't use the word discount. It's not a discount. It's because you're paying all of the money up front. We'll have it to invest all That's at the same good. time. Mm -hmm. There'll be a reduction in your assessment of about 2%. So, for example, uh, Barnstable County, if we can come up with the cash to pay all of our assessment on July 1st, we'll save about $41,000. Wow, that's good. And um, Wellfleet, I had actually had a conversation with Paul Seeloff this morning. He, he had called about something else. Um, Wellfleet will save about, let's see, uh, $14,000. It's not a lot, but it's not anything to sneeze at it's in these not, days yeah. and days either. $14,000 so. is going to help them with something like yeah. beach maintenance. Or? Something. You'll be able to do something with 14000 rather than pay the retirement. And that's good because it gives the towns the option. If they have yeah. the cash, they can pay yeah. now and save. Exactly. And if they don't, um, so, right, then they can split. So hopefully that, you know, they'll be enthusiastic about that. Um, one of these days we have to talk about our schedule going forward and what we're going to do. And on my list, some of the things I have is we need to get John Morrison here to show us how to use the shared calendar. Because yes. I yes. have no idea. Yes, we do. We do. Um, next week we're going to have the audit presentation. So um, I think Matt, oh, good. That's good. Matt Hunt is going to come. And, and what time are we meeting next week? Yes. 1230, that's going to start. 12 Because there's a lot going on at the assembly. So Matt will be here at 1230. Oh, that's right. They're going to meet the budget. Well, I mean, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get I'll put down start at 12. And, uh, yeah, I'll let's, let's do 12. At 1230. Sometimes these discussions um, are long. And the finance committee, I know John Ullman will be here. So the finance committee uh, will join us for that. And then um, I'll have Elaine come in and she'll talk about the shirts you guys asked about. She's putting some stuff oh, together good. about shirts. Gee, we just mentioned sure. that one. So Remember, we were at, um, at uh, Highfield Hall. We were all admiring. Um, oh yeah, yes. we were saying we should all have a Barnesville County shirt. Yeah, That's so right. So she's working on a little something for that. So. Uh, oh good. Boy, I wish everything got. Yeah, it takes <laughs> a bit of time sometimes to pull stuff together. And then I just wanted to mention that this week is AmeriCorps week. Um, yes. Oh. And they are at the SUNY Sands Coastal Mitigation mm -hmm. Nursery. That's on uh, 946 Craigville Beach Road in Centerville. Um, you still have a day to volunteer if you want, 9 to 6 on Thursday. And then they would love to have you come by there having their community picnic on Friday, May 14th at 1 p.m. at that place that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And I know we're kind of busy on Friday. I actually have to go take my son to the orthopedist. He, uh, Fractured his ankle, but oh, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it. I told him so. so, but that's going on. So, uh, so what time the picnic is? What time? Picnic's at one o'clock. Oh, at one. And it'll go for a couple hours. So if you get a chance maybe later in the afternoon to swing by, somebody will be there. You know, probably okay. pretty much by three or so they'll probably be done. But. And tell me again where it is. It's at uh, the SUNY Sands Coastal Mitigation Nursery. SUNY Sands. SUNY, S-U-N-I. SUNY Sands, yep. S-A-N-D-S, Sands. Yep. And where is it? I'm not spelling the rest of it. What kind of... It's 946 Craigville Beach Road in Centerville. 946 Craigville Beach Road. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not hard to find. No. Craigville Beach was my first beach on the Cape. Really? You must be the best. First was Whitehorse as a kid, my girlfriend's mother used to bring us there and then as my family we came down it was where's Whitehorse it's on the other side of the bridge that's really like in um, Wareham do you know that's in Plymouth is it in Plymouth, it's in Plymouth? Yeah. White House Beach that was, that was beautiful Whitehorse Beach, Beach yeah. yeah well being from Western Mass as a kid we used to go to Rocky Neck Connecticut yeah oh Rocky Neck and then as I got older we went to Mesquamica oh. well, when we came to the Cape we went to the, uh, we all wanted to go to Marconi but that was too far out so we always went to, N to Nassau and then on uh, May 19th, the assembly has a bunch of stuff going on. Um, 
the Standing Committee on Government and Regulations is uh, meeting on the charter at 1.30. They're meeting on the regional policy plan changes at 2.15. Um, uh, we have a, we, you will be submitting an ordinance for borrowing for the Cape Light Compact's Energy Efficiency Program next week. I will bring that to you. Is that the one we did last week, though? We did one for, what was it, did 8 million or 12 million? Oh, did you sign that last week? We, 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 oh, we submitted it to them. Oh, yeah, we yeah, submitted it last week. Oh, 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 good, because they're holding the hearing on it. Next That's week. right. <laughs> we <laughs> submitted it, and now yes. they're holding the Hopefully hearing. Right. I'm behind myself. Here. You're behind the wheel. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, so you know about the so, borrowing one. They're right. holding their hearing on that at 315. And then at 4 o'clock, you're voting on the budget. Now, what time are we meeting on the 19th? So we, I would say we'll start at noon, and the, the auditor will be here at 1230. We could start at 1230. No, that's, no. But I'd say we start at noon, then the auditor at 1230, then that'll give us enough time to do whatever we need to do, and then get over to the assembly if you want by 130 for the charter stuff. Maybe we should start at 1130. Should we want to be It's up to you. If you want to start early, that's fine with me. 11.30? Let's do 11.30. Okay. I think just, just to give ourselves that. Sure. And if and if we have a, a moment, maybe we can have a cup of coffee or something before we. Sure. So 11.30 we're going to change it to 11.30. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, yeah, sometimes it's. Yeah, or somebody comes a little bit late. It's, you know, I'm not saying <laughs> such as nobody truly. ever comes late. No, but I mean, you don't have to wait for me. But it's uh, no, but I mean, you know, discussions get go places. Sometimes. Yeah, Bill's going to give you his his uh, oh. Atlanta. So there, there you go. go. So yeah, he'll have to give us that. our <laughs> our. Uh, we'll feel like we're right there. <laughs> blow by blow. <laughs> <laughs> and next week too. You have the t-shirts. Uh, since Bill he wasn't bring there, his back any since Bill wasn't there, and I missed the last half of the homelessness luncheon, you can maybe report on that. Next yes, week. yes. All right. So this week, um, and I have to commend Alan Trebat and uh, Beth Albert and Katie Callahan over there. It is Callahan, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Katie Callahan. There's so many Katies. I'm always mixing them up. Um, for putting this together, so it was a luncheon that was fun, that was um, sponsored and funded by the Firemen's Fund. Am Fireman's I correct? Fund insurance? No, I don't know. A Firemen's Fund, yeah. So I believe it was. And um, uh, so they sponsored the luncheon over at the Cape Cotter. And what uh, they had asked, they requested that each regional network, you know, now we're coming almost to September, that grant will be running out to have a lunch and bring legislators and discuss the, um, the successes and uh, what was maybe not meeting the mark in these uh, endeavors. And uh, as you well know, that was a, um, a grant. You know, the state took away some funding and then gave it back in the form of this $765,000 grant oh, yeah. with the onus of, like the federal government, bringing people together and it had to show a regional appeal and everybody had to go through this. So once that was really understood, all of the agencies, not that they didn't trust each other, but they recognized that they wouldn't feel good if one was in charge of that money and the other wasn't, like, you know, am I getting my fair share? So that's when the county stepped in and became the honest broker. Plus, we anteed up fifty thousand dollars at least. I think it's probably been beyond in, that. In kind, in kind when you think of yeah. the administrative costs yeah. that we did to exactly. do that money and the time, the manpower that Beth right. and Alan has put into sure. this has been huge. Yeah. So, um, and she did a phenomenal job because she kept every all the measurements were there. It really there was a lot of accountability. So it did bring in. Um, that um, element of accountability in the beginning it's like anything else you know we've tried that before it's not going to work we know how to do it here we know how to do it better than everyone else well, it's and, changed. People won't and like we do no i mean as it turns out we do do prevention uh, tactics very well and but it did bring people together it was amazing to see everyone have this testimony that um, was maybe a little reluctant say in the end uh, all the case managers from those on the outer cape might have been talking to those in the upper cape for years. You know, how do you get, or do you know this person? How did you get that funding? Maybe sharing some information, talking to each other, client referral. However, they never really met. And and Alan was the one that brought case managers together. And now, not only have they met over all these years, 
but they are working together more collaboratively on the effort of the clients. And um, not only are they just sort of sharing information, they're working together to uh, make a better collaboration. So it, it went on and on about the different successes, and there were a lot of successes about the homeless. Uh, you know, there was 93, did you tape that, uh, Steve? Did you tape that, ep that episode? Uh, of the regional, they didn't have a tape. Either. I don't believe so. So I believe there was like 92 or 93 identified people that could, because we also funded a worker over on the Main Street initiative. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, it went down to about 61 people. Now, that's not to say that there's a new influx of, you know, there's always, the poor will always be with us, unfortunately. But, um, but there was really an attention to the case management. So it was a great success rate. And um, uh, Sarah Peake was there from the Outer Cape. Um, Tom Lynch from the town of Barnstable and the assembly was there. Uh, Matt, Patrick was, was Matt there. Patrick was there from Falmouth. And uh, Pat was there. There were several uh, elected, um, uh, former Commissioner Lambros was there. And Mary uh, LeClaire, LeClaire was there representing, because she's on the Main Street Initiative and has been quite active on that. And. Um, and several other, uh, you know, elected people were there to hear this, which was great. And a huge amount of people from the community, the um, human service community, plus very many, you know, a lot of members from the state. The John O'Brien from the federal government was there. Robert Pulster came down, and then we had Dennis Colhane, who is a educator and um, special. His specialty is homeless and solutions, like new ways of looking at it. So I think a lot of the new paradigm idea comes from different research he's done. And uh, so he gave a talk, but he was even saying, you're already, you're doing what I've been, you know, it's it's a new paradigm. You have to do more with less. And what's it looking like for next year? Is that there is not, and this is where we have to do our work, um, there is nothing in the budget for next year. And that came out loud and clear. This is a great initiative, and it would be, really too bad if we couldn't get some funding to have it go, it, have it funded at least another year, knowing that maybe that that type of funding stream may not be there, this grant process. But um, so many people benefited from it. So many agencies were able to parse out and not duplicate efforts, but do the real work and uh, work together. That if we could have that funded for a couple of more years, I do think then, then the roots would get into the ground and that would be an established way of doing because people are afraid it will go back to the same old, same old, yeah. and we don't want that. And um, so it was really great. I think um, you know there was some coverage on it in the paper. I know that um, one of the regional papers asked me, you know, called me on it. So um, my, uh, and I said, you know, uh, my, I'm the co-chair, but my big, my big contribution was getting Bob Murray and giving him all the work to do. <laughs> so Bob Murray, like Bob Murray like and, uh, and Beth, who are really the people that you know uh, kept that in, plus the executive board, David Willard came on and was helpful with that. So it was a great, um, great success <coughs> story, considering uh, there is still among us those who need help and are in crisis, and um, <coughs> you know it is a, a never ongoing battle no matter how much you know, we might want to be cynical but there are some that have the potential to be helped and lifted up there are some right. who are chronic and that doesn't mean that they still don't deserve our right. attention and help yeah recidivism is not the right word and I apologize for using it but it sounds like going from 92 to 61 is that's what you're really trying to do is with case management right. get, get people out of that, that right. uh, Halfway, if right. you will. And they want to they want to eliminate the shelter system. They realize that just they've been throwing millions and millions of dollars of yeah. this at this for years, and the problem has only grown. And shelters have grown. Right. It's, it's like anything else; it's a business. So if you can eliminate that sort of safety gap, it makes you focus on. We don't have a shelter, so we really have to think. We have like three days to get this person sort of situated right. in a place where we can then. Give them case management services right. and help to go or forward. Keep them from getting kicked out of their house. Yes. Yeah. You know, well, that's the biggest thing. If we can do it, a lot of the prevention dollars were right. the big key. Well, you know, I asked uh, Mary LeClaire this morning when I saw that what issues is Delahunt's office? What are the, the more uh, um, frequent calls? Yeah, yeah, yeah calls. calls and all of that. And it has to, and mostly they relate to, well, unemployment because 
the, whether there'll be another round or not right. from the feds is really questionable. Right. And foreclosures. And she foreclosures said, those are those, huge. and yeah. so when you think of foreclosures, you think of homelessness too. Right. Right. I mean, if people right. lose their homes, where right. do they go? Right. Unless if they have family, they have that's probably system, where they go. If they right. have a job, but they they couldn't pay their mortgage, that's one thing. But if they have a job and maybe could. I don't know, but just so I'm thinking in terms of what's upcoming. Oh, it's going to be the, the, uh, the you yeah. know people who are who are out of work, but the unemployment uh, uh, funds are no longer there, and foreclosures if they lose their home and have no other place. I to was own. speaking to Michaela in Rob O'Leary's office, and she said that that was a huge number of calls they yeah. got to with the foreclosures, more than. Um, the, the economic, you know, mm -hmm. the jobs, it was the foreclosures. Right. How do they get that help? So that is something, um, again, uh, through the Cape Cod Commission with the housing and Paul Roshinskis, I'm not sure what he knows about those. Well, also assistance. don't forget, we have the uh, AmeriCorps program. We had the volunteers working with HAC to right. uh, track and try to prevent the whole foreclosure right. program mm -hmm. this year. That's a one-time thing. It won't be there next year. They won't have those because that money was tied up with the... Um, not tied up. It was provided through the um, uh, Recovery Act. Right. So, that so when, you, when you say next year, you mean 2011? Yeah, 2011. So because the you know, they're not, yeah, that's and that's what she was saying. They're not sure if that Recovery Act money. There's, it doesn't look like we're going to get that. And that really kind of kept people alive this year. And um, uh, and the state budget doesn't have anything like the RMS. No, the RMS. Well, it's. Um, well, we won't go into a political uh, point counterpoint. <laughs> That's no, they just don't have any but money, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, um, people are are shy. They have been convinced that taxes are a bad thing, and I'm not saying taxes are a good thing, especially if they're wastefully spent. But, um, you know, Rob was giving a talk one time, and he did quote, is it Wendell Holmes, one of the Wendell Holmes, and he said, taxes yeah. are the, are the, um, are the life of civilization or something. You, you know, they're bad, but we won't be, you know, we'll never be you have to sort of come together as a group of people. And if you target them right, you know, I was even thinking of these local room taxes, a lot of it gets pushed back. I was at a few town hall meetings and um, some, you know, some of the towns are saying we really need this and this could do revenue. And I think it would be more palatable for people if you could say, we're going to do this tax, but this is where we're going to target it. This is what this tax is going to benefit. You know, half of the revenue coming mm -hmm. in will go towards economic development mm -hmm. or tourism or the restaurants somehow, and half of it's going to go here. I think that if people just feel like it's not going into a black hole, right. Right. it would that's be easier to take. And I think that that should be That's what I think, approach. too. That's why I think you have to go to town meeting. Yes. And tell people these are the services we can't pay for anymore. Right. Or we're, or we're cutting. But see, and, you know, and, this yeah. has happened in Mansfield. No, you're absolutely right. We tend to be our own worst enemy. And mm -hmm. part of it is, is people think there's a lot of waste mm -hmm. in government out there. And mm -hmm. that's our own fault for kind of being more open and, and trying to communicate better with what's in the budget and where it's going and what it's for. This happened in Mansfield. Mansfield, a couple of weeks ago, they came out with their new budget and their school budget, and in the school budget, they eliminated sports. Oh they yeah. eliminated a few teachers as well, but that was the big thing, they eliminated sports. Well, of course, you know how sports is. Sports oh, yeah. is a big issue. It's a big issue in Mansfield. So they come out, you know, the school committee and the selectmen, they all get together, boom, all of a sudden, sports is back in the budget. The Mansfield agreed to use from their rainy day account about Oh. Don't get the don't don't quote my numbers. About eight hundred and forty five thousand dollars to replenish to replace the sports mm -hmm. program. They didn't put the teachers back in, mm -hmm. but they used some money to put the sports, the sports back sports in. Because, and so of course, what does everybody think? You talk to the average person on the street who doesn't you know know town financing or town finance. Well, yeah, see, I knew they would. They, that was they that was just a, a to tell them they're going to cut cut sports is just blowing smoke because two weeks later everybody screamed hemmed and hawed. And they found the money. Now, what does that mean? It means you don't have the 840. You well, still have a structural deficit. Or there's yeah. an emergency, or it's yeah, a flood. Exactly. What happens and next you need year? The public or, safety, or yeah, any, or, or, some or sort there's a structural have... deficit. You didn't right. balance your budget. Right. You took just money over right. here, which from, from your savings. We've done before. Have, have not done now this year. So right. 
But that's how people think. It's, oh, you found you found yeah. money. So what right. are you telling me? There's no sports for her. So right. we're our own worst enemy in some of these right. things. Right. And it's going to get to. This is all going to come to a head as the years kind of progress, and money gets tighter and tighter because eventually that money's not going to be there, and, and people are going to see us crying wolf, saying we have to cut the sports. We don't have any money. They're going to say, well, two years ago you balanced the budget. Where is right. that now? Right. And, and the other thing, you know, with all of the talk about waste in government. There is equal amounts of waste in the private sector that never gets spoken of. When you think of people with their bonuses, when you think of people with their grand, um, let's have staff, and, and I think all of those things are good, especially when you're building morale in a, in a company or things like that. Um, but there's a lot of, and, and some of it's just built to, to have more, more people on the job, and what are they doing? Uh, and when you take public funds to do those things, such as um, you know some of the license plates to the chambers, are they going to direct uh, tourists, uh, you know, beefing up the tourism, mm -hmm. or is it just giving a lot of salaries out to uh, uh, to a uh, to a chosen few? So I would argue, Sheila, though, that after Prop Two and a Half, not necessarily that year, maybe not two years, but over maybe five or ten years from Prop Two and a Half, there's there's, in the public sector, there's very little waste, especially oh, yeah. exactly. at the local mm -hmm. level. Right. They just don't have the resources. Right. Well, you, they, you, you really, your costs go up maybe 5 to 8%, That's right. and you can only raise your revenues by 2.5%. Exactly. So at some point yeah. in time, it comes, it crunches. It's a little right. bit different because, you know, property values were skyrocketing at the and same time. And your growth happens. Right. But I would argue, as soon as Prop 2.5, over a course of years, Waste, if there were any, and it probably was in many instances, that's all been wheedled out. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just not there anymore. Right. It really is. Okay. All right. I'm looking I at think the time, and I know that I have to go home to my, my young if one. If we have no other business, I have nothing. Okay. I would need to make a motion to adjourn. to adjourn, please. And I'll second it. Those in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.